Okay, it's time for us in here to turn the heat up because it's October in Sweden. It's cold outside. I think most Swedish families has put away their grills by now in the attic or in their garage or wherever, but not here at the Global Goals Forum because it's time for the grill. <laughs> Can we get an applause for that? <laughs> So, first of all, I'd like to introduce my co-moderator during this grill. He's an actor and this year's inspirator from We Change. Please welcome Jonas Bonne! Hello! Thank you very much. You're nice so to be here. So excited, I'm around. so excited. I've been here all day. I'm just waiting for this moment, so yeah. now I'm here. Let's do it. You've done this like a thousand times before. I've done the grill, uh, not a thousand times, but a lot of times. 999. Uh, times. About that number, yeah. yeah. Uh, with a lot of the young people I see here today. And um, you know how to work it. Let's do it. I see one girl in the middle. She's so excited. She's like this. Yeah, that smile there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Contagious. So excited. Okay, so the next person on stage is Kim Jakobsson from We Change, who is going to tell us what this is all about. So welcome up, Kim. Thank you. I am so excited to be here today. How about you? Good. I'm, I'm feeling that it getting uh, the heat is getting up. Very, uh, very good. Uh, my name is Kim. I am one of the co-founders of the project We Change and the organizer of the following Global Goals Grill here today where you will be able to meet and impact both leading organizations and companies as well as the uh, Swedish Minister of Environment. Uh, as a representative of my organization, I am deeply honored to be here today uh, as an example of how to involve and include youth in the conversation about a future sustainable world because that is what we change is about. It's about involving and including all generations and not just speaking about them. Uh, I, together with my colleagues at Ungdomar and We Change, work to create a society where young people feel valuable and important, uh, as well as empowered enough to feel that they can influence their own development and society at large. So five years ago, we started the We Change tour. It has since then engaged over 30,000 high school students with the aim to provide them with tools, with inspiration, and also with knowledge on how to create a sustainable society, both today and tomorrow. And by that, through We Change, we know, we have seen we have proof, not only from all of you guys who have been traveling from around Sweden today who are here, we know that the, the young generation possesses so much potential and we have seen what amazing things can happen when major players and major actors in society just grasp this opportunity and involve all generation and especially youth in building our common future. So we have selected uh, four or five actually very influential actors who we think have the capacity to lead the change forward and you will soon meet them. And uh, Before that I will just like to show a short video from this year's tour, tour to get you uh, in the right mood and uh, happy grilling. <laughs> Go for it! <laughs> Change är Sveriges största hållbarhetssatsning för unga. Det vi vill göra med projektet är att vi vill inkludera och inspirera unga i frågor som rör hållbar utveckling. Vi vill att unga som får komma till tal till de här frågorna, då är det de det handlar om. Det här handlar om deras framtid och att de ska få vara med och skapa den framtid som de har rätt till.
our amazing sponsors that helped make this tour available uh, to all of you guys. And um, one last thing before we start the grill. Uh, a lot of you people know al already how it works. Uh, we're going to have questions from you uh, to the panelists. And you can either ask a question by raising your hand, and I'll come running with the microphone and let you answer your question. Uh, question your question from where you are. Uh, or you can download the app and text your question into us through the app. So download the app. It's called WeChange. Uh, and uh, a reminder. Uh, Put your question in on uh, in English so that everyone can read it, and uh, also specify to whom you're um, directing your question. Yeah, and if you feel insecure about your English, Swedish is okay. We will translate, but um, English is preferable. Prefer blip? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> okay, then it's time. Yeah. To introduce our panelists. So, uh, if you happen to be a panelist. Please uh, come up on stage when we call your name. Pick a goal to sit on and just like place your ass here. So please welcome Jens Magnusson, who does private and welfare economics at SEB. Ethel Forsberg, Director General of Forte. Carolina Skog, Minister of the Environment. Ulrika Hotop, Sustainability Manager at Ion. And Jonas Karlehed, Sustainability Manager at IKEA. All right, and as you can see, uh, all of our panelists have chosen their goal or uh, a goal that they care extra much about. And they're going to get to introduce themselves uh, on the clock. You're going to get one minute to introduce your company or organization or political party. And uh, also tell us a little bit about the goal you've chosen. So first out, we have Essebia and the clock is ticking. All right, excellent. Nice to meet you all. I'm Jens. Um, I'm hugely inspired by the development goals, as I think you all are. Um, but inspiration will only get us that far. Uh, we also need a lot of hard work, and we will need a lot of money. It's been calculated that uh, 600,000 billion kroner will have to be spent on the goals in order to, to realize them. Of course, no organization, no government, uh, no one has this kind of money lying around, so we have to do it together. That's the simple but important conclusion. Uh, and I think this is also where banks and SCB come into play. Uh, we need to channel money from the private market, from the public market. Uh, your savings and all the loans and credits we give to big companies will have to be used in order to reach these goals and work in a, in a sustainable way. So that's what we're aiming for. That's why I have the partnership goal and we're looking forward to doing our fair share and hopefully more. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, yes. Yes. Next out is Forte. Hi, I'm Ethel Forsberg, Director General of the Swedish Research Council. And we fund research. We fund research in three areas. It's health, it's working life, and it's welfare. Therefore, I chose this one, but actually I would have liked to pile up several ones. Um, to cope with the challenges that the global goals are putting are ahead of us. We need new knowledge, and that's what we're working with. Financing, choosing out the best research in accordance to the global uh, goals. And uh, by, but research and the knowledge by itself cannot create the solutions. We need it to be put in practice, and that's what we also work with. Uh, creating meeting places where different stakeholders meet and uh, really get together to discuss how we can do things. Thank you very much, Ito. And now we move on to Carolina Skog. Hello, I'm Carolina Skog. I'm the Minister for Environment in the Swedish government. This means that I am responsible for ecological sustainable development within our government. I also work specifically with the development of our cities. Climate change is one of the core priorities of the Swedish government and we work very hard to implement a strong climate agenda in Sweden and around the globe. 
we are a global leader in, in, in climate change policies. We intend to stay that. I am convinced that the work uh, to do on climate change can be done in many places, but specifically in the cities that are especially good uh, opportunity to realize uh, the high set goals. And I will get back on that. Thank you very much. And before time, awesome. <laughs> Next out is Ulrika from E.ON. Yeah, hi everyone. I'm Ulrika Hotshop. I work as sustainability manager uh, at an energy company, E.ON. And to me personally, it has been very important to make a change, whatever I have been doing, and to be where I can make a lot of change. And energy is, uh, also as the minister said, uh, a key issue for us to be 11 billion people on this planet, that we have good energy, clean, affordable energy as this goal um, wants us to work for um, and it's really about also about partnership and it's actually it, all these goals interlink and um, and that's as a sustainability ma manager that's also what I try to do within the company to make that change within the company but also in our business and within energy there's really a lot to do now, right now to combat the climate change especially. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lika. And last out, we have Jonas from IKEA. Hello, everybody. I'm Jonas, uh, Sustainability Manager at IKEA Sweden. Uh, good to be here and discuss how IKEA can have a uh, positive impact on the world. And uh, the global goals, they are extremely important to us, and we're committed to, to contribute in a good way. So please ask me tons of questions on how IKEA can have a positive impact on people and planet. <laughs> and also include our challenges. How can we go from a linear to a circular economy? And if you ask questions about goal number 12, sustainable consumption and production, you will see some extra fire and passion in my eyes because I think that we are very committed at IKEA that everybody should be able to afford sustainable products. It should not be a luxury for the few. Talk to you soon. Thank you very much for that. And before time, so the fire is on up on stage. Is the fire starting to brew out in the audience as well, maybe? Should we start? <laughs> yes, I think so. So uh, We need to change to the um, questions. That's right. And Jonas, you are going to run out in the audience with a microphone. Yes, I'll be right here. So if anybody is ready with their questions, raise your hands and Jonas will find you. Or if you prefer to write in the app, go ahead. I see some people are already at it, so. Okay, so which question do we start with? Let's take this one. First. Okay, so a question to Jens at SEB. SEB. What do you think are the biggest threats towards the, the economy uh, from a sustainability perspective? Ooh, the, the, <laughs> the biggest threat from a sustainability is probably that we keep on doing business as usual uh, because historically uh, money has been pouring into uh, areas and companies that has not always uh, taken the sustainability uh, in, in a very realistic and responsible way. So I think uh, the most important thing is to everyone to get it up on their agenda. It's certainly on the top of the agenda at SCB mm -hmm. and I think that's a, that's a big threat to, towards the uh, sustainability uh, if we just keep on doing business as usual. How do you work with it at SCB? Well, on a, on a sort of multi-task scale, we of the, the main impact we can have as a bank is to uh, really try to scrutinize who we're doing business with, uh, where do the credits go and where do the investments go and how are they used and how are they impacting the goals and the sustainability. So that's the big, as a bank we don't have a huge impact on the environment in our direct work. We, we don't pollute much and we, we have to of course take that seriously too when we're working on it. But the big impact as a bank or financial sector is to try to channel money to good purposes and, and that's what we're working on. Mm. IKEA, it seems like you're working hard for sustainability in Sweden. Do you have the, the same focus globally? Absolutely. Uh, we have a, um, a global uh, sustainability strategy, the people and planet uh, positive with uh, three core drivers that we, we do globally. We want to uh, inspire all our customers to live a more sustainable life at home. 
We want uh, to strive to be resource and energy independent, uh, supplying our uh, operations with the renewable energy, etc. And then the third uh, big change driver is to have a positive impact on people and communities, where we define our social uh, work. So these three change drivers we do on a global scale. Is it hard for such a big company to always have the world in mind? Well, of course, there are different challenges in, in, in different countries, uh, since we are uh, present in, in more than 30 countries. But uh, at the same time, there are so many similarities. So when I meet my, uh, my colleagues in 30 different countries, it feels like uh, we have so much in common, since we, we also share the same uh, uh, culture and the same value-based uh, way of doing business. So I think it's, uh, we, we're very optimistic about doing this globally. Please continue writing questions in the app. You're doing great. We have a question from the audience. Yes. Um, I'm kind of nervous, so bear with me. But as Jan said, we will have need a lot of uh, monetary resources to achieve these goals. And I was wondering how IKEA was thinking about that when you're laundering money through tax havens. Mm. Uh, hard question. It was about the tax. Tax evasion. Yes. yes. Well, of course, uh, wherever we are present, we would like to contribute in, in a positive way to the, the communities. So, so we, we pay taxes uh, wherever we are present. Um, and if you look at the IKEA group uh, globally, we paid um, about 800 million euros in taxes uh, last year. But which wasn't, is there, wasn't there a recent scandal where somebody found out that you didn't pay taxes in certain countries? Th there has been uh, different uh, tax issues in different countries since we are present in so many countries but uh, and I'm, I'm not a tax expert so I can't do all the details but on a global level uh, of course we're committed to, to contribute to, to all the communities where we are and it's about 20% of our uh, profits that we pay in tax wherever we are present all over the world and the same goes for Sweden. Do you feel content with that answer? I feel you should maybe become a politician instead. <laughs> I really admire politicians as well, but I hope uh, I, I didn't, uh, I wasn't vague on the answer because we are truly committed to, to pay taxes wherever we, we are present. And we also know that the EU uh, launched uh, a survey or, uh, to, to really go in depth with the, the taxes in, in different countries. So we welcome that. Uh, that survey and that uh, investigation, absolutely. So, so we need to be transparent and taxes is a, a sustainability issue, which we welcome. Okay, thank you very much and thank you for your question. Do we have any more questions in the audience? This is a golden opportunity. Yes, over here. Hello, my name is Amalia and I have a question for Kalina Skog. Um, how do you work with getting young generation, generations' perspective on how to solve the climate challenges? Thank you. Thank you very much. It's a really good question because when we talk about climate change, it's about having a long time perspective and see the world's development over time, which is often uh, lacking in uh, the political systems, which encourage short time uh, view. Uh, and in the UN process around the climate change, youth uh, are uh, included in the decision process, which is very, very important. And Sweden have been a leader on that part, taking on uh, the youth by the youth organization uh, in this decision making. But it's also important, I think, that we see the change needed uh, to happen to adapt to climate change as a change, positive change for our society, a change for positive development, uh, where we can develop new kind of businesses uh, and a new kind of economy which serves more people, and not only to, as an obstacle that are weighing us down. Uh, but change can always uh, be positive, even if it's driven uh, by necessity, as climate change are. Uh, and that is for me about uh, taking a positive approach, which I think is very important as a political leader, uh, since for young people and children growing up, uh, I think it's very, very positive that we focus on the positive side of this, even if it's a heavy, even it's, it's a heavy subject. But do you today work together with younger generations? in your climate work? Indeed, uh, within uh, the policy work around climate uh, agenda, uh, we have a, 
uh, ongoing uh, cooperation with the uh, youth organizations in Sweden, uh, and it, uh, they are also included in the UN process. Okay, thank you very much. Are you content with that answer? Yes. Good one. Should we take one from the app before I, we continue? I definitely think so. Uh, to Forte, why is the psychological well-being decreasing in the world, or is it? Do you see any progress in this field? Yes, we, uh, <laughs> we uh, can see that uh, the, it was the physical or the psychological health? Psychological. Yeah, the psychological health is threatened. We see uh, uh, an increase in the number of uh, people and uh, also the young people. I was, uh, when we uh, were uh, listening to uh, this uh, after lunch today, uh, from uh, our guests from, in, uh, from Canada, uh, we heard about this problem. And I, I, uh, it's, quite f it's uh, not as tough, uh, of course, in our society here, but um, it's, uh, it's still a problem and we see an increase and it's really worrisome because uh, um, it's, uh, I saw one of the questions saying that, asking that, uh, uh, what do you need, what do we need to, to um, restore in ourselves in order to cope with the challenges coming? And uh, we need good health. We need to be in, in good also psychological shape in order to cope with these challenges we, uh, that are ahead of us. So um, yes, the, the, the mental health, is something, a challenge for us. And, and uh, the re we make studies and we make research and, and the one area that we've studied especially is the large scale, the large increase of uh, my refugees coming uh, to Europe and to Sweden uh, last year. And uh, we will have a seminar just uh, next week where we have, um, we have tried to learn uh, and to see knowledge gaps when it comes to uh, welcoming children and uh, integrating children, refugees, into the society. Thank you. Uh, to Eon, which energy source is likely to be used in the future? Wow, that's a big question. Um, renewables, of course. Um, what we have today is wind and sun, but also what we uh, call it recycled energy. So using already the energy that is produced as many times as possible. Um, so we work towards a circular system. Um, and what the future holds when it comes to research and um, innovations, we don't know. And uh, there might be other sources that we have the technology for in the future. Um, but the important thing is that it is renewable and doesn't make a um, footprint on our mm -hmm. climate. And also that other sustainability issues in these sources are considered. Climate is one, but there are others as well. Um, when it comes to supply chain management, for instance. So exactly what comes in the future, we don't, of course don't know. And it depends on if you mean on a five-year scale or 100 years away. A lot of things can happen. But as we said earlier, looking back um, during the past 20 years, the, uh, we've emitted 50% more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Uh, you have a huge responsibility when it comes to this. Yes, definitely. How do you look upon that? Um, well, E.ON is committing now to, um, to work more towards a fossil-free society. Um, we are part of the government's initiative there as well. Um, and uh, set a clear target towards that and um, both to produce more renewables but also sell the electricity that we sell to our customers um, that help our customers to make the right choices um, and also become more efficient because that's when it comes to energy usage because that's one big part of it. The best uh, kilowatt is the, the kilowatt is never used. Uh, so that's a very important part. And to build new technology that will help uh, customers to save energy. Um, so that is sort of the plan right now. Should we see if we have any more questions from the audience right now? Yes, take your chance. Do we have any There's, hands? Uh, in Up the here. front row. <laughs> yes. Run. Thank you. Hi. Um, thank you for being here. I had a question for Karolina Skog. Um, there's a lot of talk about producing more um, sustainably and consuming more sustainably and producing more technologies. And, and, but 
what about consuming less, producing less in total? Because we can do stuff more sustainably. I'm, I actually oppose the use of the word sustainable. It's just more sustainable. But how are you discussing this in the government? What's the, what does the dialogue look like when it comes to consuming less and changing our lifestyles? So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. We are, uh, we are uh, discussing the issues around consumption uh, and the environmental impact and that's, it's part of the climate work a lot uh, within the government. Uh, and there are two main routes. One is a circular economy uh, to reuse, uh, to use products longer uh, and by re repairing them and taking uh, care of them. Uh, and also to, uh, uh, re, you know, to get new raw materials out of uh, pro products is one very important uh, thing. The other thing uh, is the sharing economy that we strongly believe in from the governments. And we have, as one of the first government in the world, uh, put, put up a special uh, project around uh, the sharing economy. Uh, we think will give us new business models, uh, but also a uh, chance to possess less uh, products, but to get the benefits uh, of different products without owning oneself, and, and, and hence reducing uh, the number of products needed uh, in our society uh, without giving up uh, quality of life uh, or economic benefits. Uh, and we do think that there is a chance of economic uh, development uh, and less uh, productive products and less raw material use can go hand in hand. Are you content with that answer? Yeah? Okay. Thank you very much. Do we have any more hands? Yes, down there. I'll be running. <laughs> um, hello. I just wanted to ask the same question to um, you guys from the uh, from IKEA and also from Eon and I guess also from SCEB because you invest in in um, companies which uh, use resources in order to gain um, their revenue. Who should go first? <laughs> All right. Uh, well, from, from an investment and an SCB perspective, that's, I mean, this is, these are really hard issues. What, what is a sustainable industry or business to invest in and where should we stay out? And of course, uh, guns and pornography and tobacco and stuff like that is, is kind of a clear cut. We, we can, you know, make a deliberate choice. But, you know, what about the fact that it takes 3,000 liters of water to produce a T-shirt? I mean, does that make us not being able to invest in H&M or another clothing f company? It's, it's a really hard question. I think what we need to do is perhaps not to not invest in everyone, but rather try to stay invested in some of these companies or a lot of the companies and then have a constant dialogue and try to, you know, reduce those uh, 3,000 liters of water down to 2,000 and then to 1,000 or the emissions and the use of, of resources. And I think you're, you're absolutely right. It's, it's a hard question. Uh, it, it's a, the, the area is important, but that doesn't make it easy. But we're trying to. At least we're very deliberate about it, and we make conscious decisions, and we try to impact all the companies that we do business with. Thank you very much. Next. Yeah. Um. Definitely. I mean, you have to eat the elephant in, in small pieces, and uh, it's maybe a cliche, but not everyone can do everything, but you can all do something, and that's what I guess what it's about, that we have to do where we work, where we are experts in whatever field we are in, and do what we can, and have a plan, have a vision uh, where we want to go to, and then uh, sort of take it step by step. Uh, of course, um, you can't do everything at the same time. When it comes to energy, um, renewables are still a minority of the energy sources we have in the world. Uh, but you have to start somewhere. And if you look at some countries, and it can go very fast if there are political and sentiments and, um, and also uh, people in general understand what it's about. So it's, it's a lot about collaboration. And finally, IKEA. And for us, uh, 
When I addressed the, the one-minute pitch, I said that I have lots of fire and passion in sustainable consumption, and I guess I have to show it now. And uh, of course, as, as a company, as a retailer, we, we are part of the, the consumer society, and we're part of all the challenges that come with that. But we also want to be part of the, the solution, and as a big company, of course, we want to take a, a big responsibility. And that's why we have this uh, ambitious uh, sustainability strategy, people and planet positive. And just like Carolina said, moving from the linear to the circular economy is one of our biggest focuses right now. Because circular economy drives innovation uh, for IKEA, and it also meets all these new demands from the customers that we're talking about. And it's a prerequisite for IKEA to be able to be a continuous, uh, successful company in the future. If we don't move into the circular economy, we cannot grow within the borders and limitations of the planet in the future. So we have a very ambitious uh, plan for moving from the linear to the circular economy. The challenge is that we can't do it overnight, since it's 200 years of linear economy. But what we can do is to, to be very confident that we will work together with others, politicians and NGOs and uh, the civil society, to, to take this step from linear to circular society. Thank you very much. And as time is slowly, slowly, slowly running out, I have one last question that I would like all of you to answer. And since time is short, please keep your answer short as well. Uh, so my question is this. If you let go of all the policies and everything you know about what your company or organization stands for, and you had the supreme power to change one thing within your company or party or organization, what would that be? Very concrete, very short. You can start with you, Jens. <laughs> all right. Um, well, I would try to, I, I would implement a policy saying that we have to uh, build even more bridges. I think uh, if it's one thing the, the development goal teaches us is that no one actor can do this alone. We have to build bridges. There's a history of slight mistrust between public sector, private sector, NGOs. We have to put all that aside and try to build new relationships and, and move it forward. Maybe uh, involve more young people. Absolutely. That's why we're here. Gender equality, uh, that we have a research society uh, that uh, is uh, well, uh, the money is, uh, is uh, well di distributed among uh, female and uh, women scientists. I think this is a, has a really influence on the result of the research and we need, we need all to get up on our toes in order to cope with the challenges ahead of us and uh, this is one way of doing it. Yes. Yeah, since you gave me the opportunity to get rid of things, uh, I would like to get rid of it the last 50 years focus on the car uh, in the world uh, and rebuild uh, all cities for what they were. Uh, cities, places for people, where it's good to walk and bicycle uh, and you can experience green things and meet people. Uh, and to do that, car will be there but have a minimum place and not today. And like today where they dominate uh, and cause a lot of uh, problems like air pollution and uh, safety hazards uh, and take space that should be for people and plants. I like the fact that you saw the whole society as your corporation or like organization. That's perfect. That's good. <laughs> Just where you're mine. supposed to be. Yes, Ulrika. <laughs> yes, uh, as an idealist, uh, I'm a bit impatient, so I would like to get into people's mind and uh, change their mindset now. <laughs> uh, of course, yeah, change takes time. And uh, yeah, so that's what I would like to change. And definitely, then I see young people who come in at Dion, they have that mindset already from the beginning because, yeah, you learn it in school uh, much more than we did and it's more there naturally. So that's why definitely we need you guys. One big potential for us at IKEA is that uh, we have to be even faster in our decision making. I mean, we're a big company and there's a lot of strengths with that, but there are also weaknesses because sometimes it takes too long to really come to that uh, decision. My small comfort is that when we do that, we, we really can go all in and make a change, but sometimes we, we take too long time and we have to work on that every day. Well, thank you very thank much. Thank you guys. Didn't really have the time this time to get the heat up fully, <laughs> but we got a lot of answers as well.
Yes, and guys, good job with the questions. I think you should give yourself an applause. Thank you very much, Thank you very much. for coming.